when we talk about sexual exploitation it happens in several ways but largely it is the children who are affected because of the vulnerability that comes with children the high dependence level on their parents and on adults and the fact that they are vulnerable to abuse this particular meeting brings together a host of stakeholders social protection welfare officers and uh, bringing us together in one room helps us to build synergies on how we can collectively work together as a team to ensure the safety and the protection of children when we started talking about sexual exploitation about children uh, the situations become worse considering the fact that COVID came with its own challenges so it's important that also we sit back as practitioners and reflect on how are we going to ensure the safety and protection of children in times such as COVID and um, before more often people used to think that children were safe in the homes and COVID also showed us that actually children are more unsafe in the homes as compared to any other area so as people who are in response people who are in the prevention concerning children such a training and such a meeting helps us to sit back and come up with new strategies on how we can work to ensure the safety and well-being of children because that is the only way we are going to guarantee the future of the children who will bring up in a holistic manner. As Uganda, we do not have a law specifically that prohibits oxia. However, we cannot say that the absence of the law means that there is no crime of that category that is being committed. So as a prosecution office and as investigators, we have not left things to go lying. We use the existing laws to make sure that we hold the perpetrators accountable for whatever crimes that may be committed. We have vast laws, we have the Computer Misuse Act, we have the Penal Code Act, uh, we have um, other international laws from which we draw uh, provisions, we have the Trafficking in Persons Act, all of those and also the Children Act that specifically prohibits child pornography and engaging children into online other activities. So bringing all those laws together, we are able to seek justice for the children, but also ensure we hold the perpetrators accountable for the acts that are done against children online. And unlike other physical offenses that you can see tangible effects, for online exploitation brings in a certain twist that um, unless you're mindful of the trauma that comes with the commission of the offense, it's difficult to pay specific attention to the children and ensuring that they are well protected. So back home, we have the gaps in the law but also we have systemic challenges that come because of the, 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 the absence of the law. And uh, this means that we must work together in a needed way to ensure protection and also successful protection, uh, successful prosecution of many of the cases that come up as a result of abuse that is online. And we need to also bear in mind that the trauma that is caused by a physical offense is also the same trauma that is caused to a child when an offense is committed online. Whether an offense is committed offline or online, it's important that we ensure that the children are safe, even as they use the internet, but also the perpetrators don't take advantage of their vulnerabilities to abuse them. We have to work together across board for everybody who has access to a child. In the schools, we have to work with the schools, we have to work with police, we must work with parents, and then we must work with communities to ensure safety of those children.